A lot of people don't love how Games Workshop do jump infantry. Now we've been sent the new jump intercessors from Games Workshop. And in this video, we are going to show you three awesome ways that you can turn your jump infantry from hopscotching, skipping, or falling off a rock into actually looking like epic jump pack infantry. It's tabletop time. concept I'm going to go ahead and use when it comes to creating your own flying miniatures is putting on a flying stand. Now, these are usually acrylic rods that just kind of go up into, well, either hopefully the backpack or the miniatures, um, yeah, and then it glues onto the base. It's a really simple and effective method and this is pretty much how Games Workshop used to do a lot of their flying bases. You could get some different types, but the example that I'm probably going to use is one that is just straight. I do plan, however, to make my Space Marine slightly tilted, so it looks like he's actually jump packing away from the ground. Some people don't like flying bases, some people love them, so we're just gonna go ahead and use this as a concept because I actually personally really like them. So my sister's a battle Sarah from Squad are actually on flying stands as well, and I like them a lot. I think they're a really great way to make them stand out and when you have a battle that's over a thousand points you can easily tell the unit because they're standing a bit higher than everyone else. But for now I'm going to start building my space marine, specifically a blood angel. I'm going to go ahead and make the captain of this squad because I thought he looked pretty cool and I really wanted to paint up that sword. Everything fit together really nicely and I have no complaints for this kit. I think it looks really really cool. The only final touch I needed was to clip off the little rock thing that he's standing off so he could be free flying. Once he's all done it's time for a prime and some color. So I've made up my space marine. He's pretty good to go. I don't have the flying base for him yet. I'm actually gonna do that towards the end because uh, I don't want to get paint on it. So I'm gonna leave that off for now and I've super glued him to a base. Uh, so I'm going to do some airbrushing, doing a zenithal first and then I'm gonna pop the red on top for blood angels. Marine is all primed and I've put on some red colors for the blood angels. I'm actually really happy with how this process turned out. I don't usually do airbrushing a whole lot but I decided to give it a go for this project just to kind of see if I could do it and just try some new techniques. I think it came out really vibrant and there's a couple of things I would change for next time but otherwise I think he's ready to go for some line highlighting and just adding in those final colors. I opted for more of a pinky tone when it came to doing my line highlights rather than a bright red or a orange, kind of just seeing if I could keep it more in the red zone, but trying to make those highlights pop. I went ahead and carefully outlined all of the Space Marine, and I haven't done this in a little while, so my hands were a little shaky, but I think I did a pretty okay job. Having done that Zenithal in the first place with the darker colors at the back and the brighter ones at the front definitely helped create really cool lines. Once I was happy with how this was looking, I went ahead and started base painting some of the other motifs on the Space Marine, such as the emblem on his chest, a couple of pouches, his eyes, and the sword. I also went ahead and added a wash to these, and once that was dry, line highlighted them up too. So back in the day, I used to paint my power swords pretty similar to how I'm going to paint this one up today, opting for more bluey colors and trying to create that really nice sheen in between. This is probably a really old school method, but a part of me really enjoys doing it, and I think visually it looks really pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet blend this just a little bit and then add on those final highlights at the end. And then for the last step was just adding that plasma glow to his gun, which I'm gonna use a blue contrast paint for this. And once my space marine was looking nice and spiffy and definitely a blood angel, I started to add the base. So now that my blood angel is all painted up, I have to somehow attach the flying stand to my space marine. So uh, if you uh, don't wanna see uh, me drilling into a space marine in a very uncomfortable position, uh, look away now um, because it's, it's gonna get pretty hectic. I carefully marked out with a bit of paint where I wanted the flying stand to go into my Space Marine. And this worked out pretty well. I was able to mark out a little spot and start drilling accordingly. I moved up in drill size as well because the flying stand actually was a bit thicker than I thought it would be, but it worked out really well. After about 10 to 20 minutes of drilling, so quite a long time, I eventually got it to fit in nicely and snug. I wasn't too sure how this would look a flying stand coming out of a very peculiar area of the Space Marine, but I actually think this works really well. It keeps a really good silhouette of the model and it doesn't interfere with it in any way. Once I was happy with how this was looking, I went ahead and glued it into place, some texture to the base and some flock on top. So here's my Space Marine all done and I think he looks really cool. It was a really simple paint job and the flying stand went in pretty well. So this is a pretty effective method if this is something you want to try out for yourself. But I'm all done so we're going to move on to Murray and check out what he's up to. 
In comparison to Jen's flying stand marine, my marine is going to be sprinting hellbent across the open plains as he closes with his enemy. He's using his jump pack to do those short bursts. That's kind of what they're for in the lore. They're not just sort of flying around with a jet pack. It's a jump pack. So he's going to be absolutely sprinting full pelt towards his enemy. I'm thinking the really cool animation sequence from Astartes. We have the marine just absolutely going ham towards the psychers. So of course, what I need is a good pair of running legs. And to do that, I'm actually going to go and find some old push fit assault intercessors from the various starter kits you used to get from Indomitus or such. Now I am using two marine bodies to create one. However, the push fit marines from the starter kits are really, really easy and accessible to find. You can get them on eBay for super cheap. So I think this is a pretty accessible experiment in itself. Now, once I've chosen my perfect sprinting legs, I've then gone and altered the top half of the body. I want to use as many parts from the new assault marine set as possible. And also I want to create a proper running body. So the torso has to be twisting in the right direction. However, the downside to this is that I discovered that the new jump intercessors actually have little rocket thrusters on their heels. They've got Healy thrusters. <laughs> I'm going to lose that if I use the Assault Intercessors, so I think it's going to be down to your personal tastes if you use them or not. However, I'm going to go ahead and just use the old Intercessor legs. Now, once I've assembled most of the body here, it's time to find the correct arms to get that real pump action sprinting effect. I want my arms as bent as possible, and to do that, there's going to be a little bit of cutting involved but it's gonna be well worth it in the end. And then once I'm happy with the overall posture, get the right tweaks with the head facing just the right way to get that real sense of movement, I then added some tiny flakes of corkboard to the base to give the effect that he's so heavy, but going so fast, he's absolutely kicking up all this debris and creating this absolute whirlwind of destruction even before he hits his enemy. After that, I'll add some more sand to the base and it's time to start painting. If I'm going to be painting a space marine that's going to go fast, of course, I want to go with white scars. One, for the novelty of painting a white space marine. I haven't done that very often, so I'm going to give that a go. But also, I think it suits the narrative for this particular marine so well. White scars are all about rapid redeployment and going absolutely headfirst into everything. They're very cool and I love them to death. I started with black and then did a bunch of different sprays from different angles of warm pinks and some very pale pearlescent blues. As I want to give this white a very interesting and mottled look, as if it's a bit dirty or just refracting some of the light around it. So it's gonna be a little bit of experiment. Let me know in the comments, uh, what do you think of my white scars formula? Once I finish with the spot highlights and overall zenithals in more of a true white, I'm gonna go in and paint out all the areas in black and then start filling in all the little details. This includes the red trim, a nice band of red down the top of the head, and of course, all the lightning bolts effects of red as well. I'll paint in the eyes and then we have a finished marine. I'm really happy with the overall effect of this. I think it looks super cool. I kind of vibe this running marine thing. Hopefully you really enjoy it as well and it's time to pass it on to Dave. So for our third way to fix the wobbly falling over marine poses, I am going to use a special effect jetpack plume. Basically the idea that they're lifting off with their jump packs and they have these massive wafts of smoke and jet thrust and using that as a flying stand that you can paint. I've done this before with my Sakura Tau, but I did that a little bit low poly and a while ago. So I'm going to jump into 3D modeling software and design a little pair of jetpack plumes that will fit with one of these assault marines. Let's take a look at this kit and see what I can do. So the biggest problem with these special effects style bases is that the jetpack needs to perfectly match the plume of smoke, which means each one needs to be bespoke designed for the miniature it's used for. And in particular, these new jump pack infantry come with a bit of a problem. The thrusters are actually facing outwards at quite an angle. So if I was to use these on a base, they would all be flying hilariously up into the sky belly first, or leaning so far ahead from their base that they are unwieldy and wobbly and just look terrible. So the solution to this is cutting the thrusters on the jetpack. I had assembled one and then I decided to grab a second when I realized this and used a knife to just cut all the pieces at their axes. I could then glue them back together and rotate them so that they were facing down. Based on the design of these jump packs, it does look like these nozzles are supposed to be able to rotate and that would make sense for giving them a full range of motion in flight. That was my primary consideration 
So designing this, I took a photo of the model and got some rough proportions and brought them into Blender. I created two conical shapes and picked some angles that I thought would be nice. I did pull these angles a lot narrower together and I believe this is fine despite the angle of the nozzles on the jump pack because most jet engines have internal flaps or devices that control the direction of the thrust. This will also allow the model to actually fit on a 32 mil base as opposed to the jet thrust just flying over the side of it. Once I was happy with the rough shape of the plumes, I set about creating a half sphere and ballooning it out with sculpting tools, creating a really natural cauliflower like texture to the outside of all of the smoke and building it up until it looked like it was billowing out away from the thrust. I went back and forth a few times and printed a test print to see if it would fit and discovered that it in fact did not. So I needed to make some tweaks to those jet plumes. And while doing this, I also just added a little bit of texture to the plumes themselves. It looked fine digitally, as I could imagine a tight cone of jet thrust, but when I had it physically, it did kind of just look like two pylons stuck into some smoke. With these little changes made and the parts designed, I put them on our 3D printer and waited for them to print. Now it's raining really heavily here in Australia, but that doesn't mean it's all bad news because my print has come out perfectly. The lazy man's way to remove a print. I'm a rocket man. So when I saw a box of assault marines land on my desk, the only thing I could think of was the Raven Guard. And I think it's cool that we've all picked very distinct assault marine focused chapters. But if I was making a Raven Guard, I needed a beaky helm, that Mark VI helmet that is just iconic. Given that Mark VI is also known as Corvus Pattern, stands to reason I make one for the Raven Guard. Thankfully, the brand new Stern Guard kit does come with a properly scaled Mark VI helmet. So I nipped that out of the sprue. Raven Guard paint schemes are super interesting, often incorporating a whole bunch of white in them, depending on their veterancy status. But with this particular model, I decided to go against that. And the reason for this is I knew the thrust effects that I'd sculpted would be quite bright and vibrant. And balancing the brightness of that fire effect against flat white armor panels would be a massive challenge that would also just be easily avoided by not doing it. I've been listening to the painting phase lately and they had Richard Gray on who talked a bit about dry brushing and Peachy's talked about dry brushing as well. So I've been practicing practicing using good dry brushes and not using paper towel. And I've got to say, I really like the gentle gradients you can build with these. So I use those techniques for the majority of the armor. Raven Guard are really simple to paint with a gorgeous striking paint scheme, really good supplementary popping colors of those warm browns and bright reds. And they come together when you put the transfers on. So I wanted to do the markings properly before I get into painting this. And uh, it's convenient. The Codex actually has these assault intercessors painted up as Raven Guard. I rarely try and be completely compliant, but this is a first founding chapter. I got to get it right. So uh, yeah, right shoulder pad, red trim, some transfers only. Um, There's no Raven Guard transfers. There are Ultramarines, Imperial Fist, Salamanders, and Raptors. That That's the Raven Guard, Iron Hands. No Blood Angels? Blood, well, they probably would get their own in their own kits, but yeah, if, if I guess rip. Iron Hands and Raven Guard. Thankfully, I've collected many, many, many Space Marine kits in the past, and I have plenty of old Space Marine transfers that have Raven Guard all over them. So I grabbed the Close Assault one, a squad marking for the knee, and the classic Raven Guard Eagle, or Raven. Why did I say, why did I say Raven Guard Eagle? <laughs> it's a Raven. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing off the paint job with some bright poppy reds for the eye lenses and that company marking on the trim. For the thrust effects, I painted on some really sloppy, wet blended, bright yellows, blending out into orange, and then dry brushed on dark oranges, grays, and all the way to black. This isn't particularly realistic. Most smoke plumes would probably have white smoke, but when we're talking painting, it's rule of cool, and this contrast plays really well off the rest of the Raven Guard model. So the final step for this paint job was to airbrush on some of that glow effect onto the back of the model, but I'm being a bit subtle here. This isn't a major OSL piece, but it would look a little odd if there wasn't any. With all this done, I could glue it together and onto a base and uh, that's it, we're all finished. So let's see some sweet reveals of our finished products. We 
We'd like to thank all our amazing patrons who make this possible. You're all wonderful. We've just done our monthly mini review where we got to see all of your awesome models and it was super cool to get to give you some pointers and also see what you've all been working on. If you'd like to get involved with that, consider signing up to the Patreon. Links are down in the description. We're children. It's Forrest Jump. Hey, hey. He's, he's running. I like that. You know what, I think what's interesting to me is while I don't mind the falling over poses as much as a lot of people, I actually think all three of these are cooler than the falling over. Yeah, all of these look really powerful in their own right. Mm. It's not just sort of, you know, ha ha. Yeah, some people don't like flying bases, but if you do like flying bases, I actually enjoy the commitment of these jump inventory that you've done, Jen. It's committed to being a flying model and it looks cool in doing that. Murray, that extra dirt being kicked up and that weight of a jump marine charging into combat is exactly how it's described in the lore and as seen in games like Space Marine. Yeah, uh, Dawn of War 2 was my jam. Right. <laughs> And yours looks exceptionally sick. I think you've done an amazing job sculpting it and it looks really good. Yeah, that's so dramatic and cinematic. I, I think, think Raven Guard was the right choice for the colours as well. Oh yeah. Thanks for watching. We'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions on how you could also convert these into masterpieces. This has been really fun. Thanks to Games Workshop again for sending us the kit. And if you're bold enough to try reposing the thrusters on your Assault Marine jump packs or maybe just a character, shattering and dropping your model like Jen did, I'll be making this file available. Now I will warn you, it's only going to fit if you cut and convert your jump pack. It won't fit the standard models. You have to do this, but why not? It'll be free on our website for a limited time. So uh, if you want it, check it out and go check out our merch in our web store while you're there. And uh, I'm gonna stop talking and let the video end so we can deal with Jen getting very upset, slowly realizing she's destroyed all her hard work. <laughs> See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> She's fine. <laughs>